Hi, I'm Tobias, and I'm here to tell you about Prequel, a modern language for transforming data. And this is PRQL, the Pipeline Relational Query Language. It's a modern ergonomic replacement of SQL, and that also incorporates features of um, other alternative data um, query paradigms, such as uh, pandas or uh, binq. And if you have any familiarity with those, then hopefully this uh, volume query will already look familiar to you. But if not, then um, stay for the next 10 minutes and I'll take you on a whirlwind tour of prequel. So the um, prequel started with a proposal posted to Hacker News in January 2022. And as you can see from my GitHub star history, it was immediately received with um, quite a lot of enthusiasm and support from the community. And we've been growing the language and the ecosystem since then. And yeah, we're very excited about where um, we're going in the future. So the first thing I might hear you ask is, um, why do we need a new language for transforming data? Don't we already have SQL? And it's true that SQL is a lingua franca of data. And these days you can use it beyond just the traditional places where you'd find it, such as relation, with, um, relational database management systems, but also like on data frames or data lake house engines. And we believe this um, ubiquity is due to two aspects. A, it is relational and B, it is a declarative. So in pre-call, we want to retain those two key features, but um, we believe that SQL is, you know, was created in the 1970s and its age just shows like the syntax is convoluted and it's kind of anachronistic. And um, if you look at some of my old, uh, longer presentations, I'll give into more details what we believe is wrong with um, SQL. But here I'll just show you how we believe prequel is a modern overhaul that really just focuses on analyst and developer productivity and is um yeah is a, is a joy to work with that makes your data work just uh, more efficient and um, enjoyable so without further ado then let's look in, at people so the p stands for pipeline and that is because we have a logical flow of data from the top to the bottom. So if you look here in the first line, we start with from invoices. So we're putting records from a table of invoices. Then in the next line, we derive two additional fields or columns. Then we apply a filter, a group by operation, and then another filter. So all familiar um, parts from SQL, but the key difference is that prequel, these are transforms, not clauses. So by clauses in SQL, the clauses have to come in a particular order. So for example, you cannot simply put the from clause first and the select clause at the end or put the where clause before the from clause, etc. Whereas with prequel, because everything is based on transforms, there are no such restrictions. And that really greatly simplifies things. So for example, in the third line, we apply filter and that might then translate into a where clause. But and in the fifth logical line, we have another filter, but that one comes after a group by operation. And hence, if you know your SQL, you'll know that actually that would be translated into a having clause. And these are the kind of things that a SQL user has to remember and that are kind of quite uh, confusing and difficult to grasp for newcomers. Whereas prequel, it hides all this complexity from you. And you, know, you can just do a filter as you want to filter the resulting kind of data set and prequel will figure out how to translate that into SQL behind the scenes. And so that is enabled by our orthogonality of our transform. So we work hard to try and ensure that each transform does only like one thing. And for example, if you look at this uh, group by operation, the group will split the data sets into different uh, logical groups and then it takes another parameter, a pipeline or a prequel query, and that can be an arbitrary prequel query that will be applied to each group of the data. So here I've, uh, I've applied an aggregate function, but you could also just apply any arbitrary prequel query, and I'll show you an example of that just now. So this leads to a number of nice invariants. So for example, select will never change the number of rows, derive only adds columns, filter only reduces the number of rows. And again, this is in contrast to SQL, where a select, for example, is quite an overused um, clause. And for example, if a select contains some um, aggregate functions, then it might return only a single row or with a group and multiple rows, or it might return all rows if there's no uh, group by clause. So it's hard to know just by looking at that clause what will happen. Whereas with uh, prequel, you know that um, what 
exactly what each transform will do and nothing else. And all of prequel is built from a very small number of primitives. In fact, we only have these 12 primitive uh, transforms from which the whole rest of the language is, is built up. And that means it's a small footprint, which makes it quick and easy to learn and easy to remember. And you can hopefully construct your queries without having to go back to the documentation to look up the details. And yeah, the street viewer might have noticed, okay, well, there's, we only have those 12 primitive transforms. What about something like the stint? Well, if you think about what you actually want when you do, um, do a stint operation, you kind of want to group by some columns and then make sure you only get a single row for each group. So based on that, the, this is the following people query that you might come up with. And in fact, if you put that through our compiler, then you'll see that it actually will produce the query at the bottom. And, and the last uh, thing kind of that really uh, enables composability, which I believe is kind of the power tool of, of all programming, building complex things out of simple ones, is functions. So in prequel, we can define functions. So for example, at the top, we have a definition of a take smallest function, which takes two parameters, n, the number of rows or records to return, and tbl, a input table or relation on which to apply this function. And so if you look at the query at the bottom, you'll see that we can take a table of tracks and pull records from that and then apply the take smallest three uh, function, which will give us the three smallest tracks in, in that table. Now that translates to the following SQL query, which is also not too complex. So perhaps not much gain here, but the power really comes in on the next slide. When we now look at, well, what if we want to find the three smallest tracks per album? So we can simply partition our data set by album ID with group and then apply the take smallest three function to each subgroup. And that in, in fact um, gives you the correct answer. Whereas um, I challenge you to produce a similar query in SQL. It is doable, but it is not uh, straightforward. So I think this really demonstrates the power of having simple orthogonal primitives on which we build up the rest of the languages and queries. Finally, we also have a number of uh, micro features or ergonomics. And if we just run through these quickly, so when we look at the arrive age, we'll see that we have a date literal, um, literal syntax and we can um, do arithmetic with those dates, work out the age, and that will be translated to the correct date um, functions in the underlying SQL dialect that you target. In the next line, we compute the full name by um, being an F string, which might be familiar to you from Python, which allows us to easily combine values from multiple columns as well as uh, string literals. Then in the next line, we have this double uh, question mark operator, which is our coalesce operator, because nulls are a common feature of relational data. And hence, yeah, we have an ergonomic syntax to apply coalesce and fill in null values where they are found. In the next line, we have uh, comments. So it's easy to comment out lines. And because we allow trailing commas, you don't have to worry about where to place your commas at the beginning or the end. And finally, we have underscores and numeric literals, which make numbers easier to read and, and hopefully avoids those fat finger problems of having one too many or too few zeros in your numeric literals. All right, so with after that whirlwind tour, let's look back at this um, query and hopefully I've given you enough um, background that most of this should look familiar to you now. If not, then come and check out some of the links I will be posting right at the end for where you can learn more. I just have two more sections, like where can you use prequel today? So first I'd say go to the link um, at the bottom of the screen here, which is our online playground, which is our compiler compiled to WASM running right in your browser. And you can input prequel queries and on every keystroke compile to um, SQL on the right hand side. And it also has a number of well-documented um, examples that will get you up to speed and running with prequel in no time. There are two databases that already support prequel natively, namely DuckDB by means of this extension and ClickHouse that supports it as an alternative query language. We have a VS Code extension you can easily download and install. We have bindings for Python, R, JavaScript, and Elixir, and the list is growing all the time as we receive contributions from the community. And we have a CLI tool which can take a prequel query as an input, produce a SQL query as an output, and you can then pipe that SQL to your favorite database CLI tools such as DuckDB or PC or for Postgres. Finally, let me just tell you a little bit about that project. It's Apache 2 licensed, so you can use prequel wherever you want in your hobby work or at, at work. Um, 
commercially. It's completely volunteer driven. We have no corporate association and we will never monetize. And we want to demonstrate that to the community and looking at two ways of doing that. Um, our community is the over 8,600 GitHub stars to date, 58 contributors who've had PRs merged into the code base and four main um, committers from all over the globe. So a really diverse team driving the language development forward. Finally, our roadmap, there's a couple of things we're excited about introducing soon, our module system and formalizing the type system, and also doing more with databases, reading schemas and um, supporting other backends such as uh, Substrate or some of the data frame APIs. Of course, if there's anything missing that you would like to see, please come and contribute, open that PR, you know, we do our best to merge and review PRs um, as soon as we can. And you know, we are a very friendly community. So please contact us and um, check out our website um, at the top or GitHub repo or come talk to us on our Discord. And I look forward to interacting with you there. Thank you.